They don't want to deal with it. Even as she obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, I would never call him no Lord. <laughs> he don't even work. And that's bad, and he wrong if he not doing what he's supposed to do. But the Lord can handle that. Call him Lord. <laughs> Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, go ahead. Whose daughters ye are. Whose daughters you, you see, the women are uh, uh, Sarah's daughters, as long as what? As long as you do well. And are not afraid with any amazement. Uh-huh. Verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands. Now here's something for the husbands. Go ahead. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with the wife according to knowledge. You got to operate with some will. I had to tell men this all the time. Men, a lot of times, they be arguing with their wife over stuff they ain't even got to argue about. Matter of fact, she been, didn't say it. I didn't been in counseling session. She didn't say it well. I go along with what he said. I just don't like it. He don't like that she don't like it. Look, skip it. She says she'd do it. But yeah, but see, she ain't, she, you know, he want her to capitulate all the looks. She, she might not be ready for that, but she said she will do what you wanted her to do. That's what you wanted, right? Well, I don't like the way it took too long for her to say it. Just crazy. You ain't operating with wisdom now. Sometimes husbands want their wife to be a mind reader. They don't even want to tell them what they want. They expect them to know. Well, you you should have known that. Well, now why you didn't tell her? Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge. What? Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor unto the wife. See, the wife, she, you know, by being in subjection, ain't saying she a doormat and she ain't nobody. Because... Hey, like James Brown said, it's, it is. It's a man's world still. Even though women try to rule, it's still a man's world to this day. And in some venues, women have surpassed men, but not as a whole. It's still a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman. Wouldn't be nothing to even talk about. Likewise, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto who? The weaker vessel. See, and you got to recognize the wife is supposed to be the weaker, weaker vessel. Sometimes the man gets so upset, get too upset, because the woman didn't do something right, and it's unnecessary. She is the weaker vessel. You got to recognize that. Go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Because that's what we're trying to do. We all trying to get eternal life, whether you married or not. But if you married, then you got a partner to work at getting eternal life with it because nothing, nothing else don't matter. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Pick it up at verse 22. Ephesians 5 and 22. Go ahead and read it when you get there. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. See, this is repeatedly. And you got all kind of examples in the Old Testament that we don't have time to read. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband. See, some kind of way, even some people in the Word think that somehow this means it's, 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 it's supposed to be equality, not according to the Bible. That ain't the Bible way of marriage. And this would help marriage. First thing, knowing that it ain't no way out of marriage and the second thing, everybody got their role to play, and this is the role of the wife. And if she's smart, she won't have no problem playing that role because she obeying God, even if her husband is a fool. She going to be okay. If you trust in the Lord, you can have a fool for a husband, and the Lord going to take care. You got examples in the Bible of that. So what, what you got to sweat for? You ain't got nothing to sweat. But then women get all bent out of shape for something the man did. The Lord didn't make you his head. The Lord can judge him. He can handle him. And now they all upset and been out of shape about to have a heart attack. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as who? As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. That's a big statement. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife. See, you might say, well, he, see, he, he just wanted to be that way. Look, I didn't write none of this. The husband is the head of the wife. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church. See, Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the man. 
So Christ can handle the husband. So this is the order. Just like Christ is the head of the church. Go ahead. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore what? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. See, that would help a whole lot. See, and sometimes we have been through all kind of drama before we get married to somebody in the world and got a whole lot of baggage. But hey, once you've done it, you got to deal with that. So let wives be to their own husband everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Now here's the responsibility of the husband. He's supposed to love his wife. Not hate his wife. He's supposed to love his wife. And he's going to tell you how much. Go ahead. Even as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for it. That means he's going to make whatever sacrifice necessary to make sure she is straight. Go ahead. That he, may, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water by the word. See, that's what Christ did for the church. That's what he told the woman to do, the husband to do, for his wife, and, and also his family. Go ahead. That he might pre that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Mm -hmm. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Uh-huh. But, th but that it should be holy and without blemish. Uh-huh. Go ahead. So ought men to love their own. Wives as their own body. See, that's a, that's a lot of love right there as their own body. So what you wouldn't do to your own body, you're not going to do to yourself. Even as mad as men get with they self. We all make mistakes. You get mad at yourself. Say, oh, man, I messed up. I can kick myself in the butt. But you usually don't do that unless you got some issues. Some men went out and killed themselves. Well, they got an issue already, so it ain't no surprise. They kill the whole family, then kill themselves. <laughs> they crazy. But generally, if you in some kind of soundness of mind, you ain't going to do nothing to yourself. So that's just like doing it if you do something to your wife. Go ahead. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh. Go ahead. Just what I said. Go ahead. But nourishes but nourish it and cherish it, mm -hmm. a, even as the Lord, the church. Go ahead. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Uh-huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Back to where we started at in, in uh, Matthew 19, where he let you know, ain't no, once you do this, there's no out. I don't care how upset you get. I don't care what happened, what you think. The only out he gave a man is if the woman had fornicated or committed adultery go ahead for this cause and they go back to genesis for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother go ahead and shall be joined unto his wife uh-huh and they too shall be one see family. they won and once they won that's it ain't no coming between that go ahead this is a great mystery uh-huh but i speak concerning christ and the church mm-hmm nevertheless let every one of you now he took it all the way home to christ and the church because that's comparable to a man and his wife. That's how serious it is. But back on the physical level, nevertheless, let every one of you what? In particular, so love his wife even as himself. See, the man's supposed to love his wife as himself. So he ain't just because he's the head. He ain't trying to take advantage of his wife. He trying to make sure she is in the best of situations. You know, he know he, resp he responds. See, being the head don't mean you not doing what you're supposed to do and trying to be the boss. But the old saying is true, the, 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 uh, it, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. But even if you don't, that don't get a woman no option to say, well, he ain't doing what he's supposed to do. I'm going to act crazy too. Nope, you still got to let the Lord handle it. That's what he's been letting you know. Then, if the Lord fix them, it'll all be one like it's supposed to be. And as the saying goes, you can live happily ever after until the Lord come and we become God. Let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And for the wife, what? And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Oh, and the wife see that she reverence. You know, that's a, that's a lot of respect. And I understand some women... Certain things happen with a husband. They lose respect for him, but you better pick some more up. You got to pick some up. 
Like they, like they say, fake it till you can make it. Because this is what he's telling you to do. See that she reverence her husband. That means she look up to him and recognize him as her head. Like we said, saw Sarah called Abraham Lord. Go to back to Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Back to Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Back to the Old Testament. So we're seeing, really, this is how marriage works according to the Bible. And one thing that don't work, we saw already, is putting away, divorce. It don't work at all. And you can set yourself, see, the Lord got it where you set yourself up for, for getting married real easy. And he tell you this, because the problem with divorce is like we saw it creates, it opens up a whole nother can of worms. It just become a vicious cycle because people going to go and they're going to be with somebody else and they're going to be sleeping around. It's going to be backwards and forth. It's going to be a bunch of mess. And the Lord truly hate that. That's why he got something like this in the Bible. You ever wonder why the Lord got everything covered? Got something like this that really, if people abide it by it now, it will be a lot less fornication going on 22 and 16 go ahead and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her he shall surely endow her to be his wife now that's a big statement brother and sister see notice and other scripture lets you know he didn't even have to know her he didn't even have to know her now and you know people that slept together didn't even know each other they met one time and slept together See, the Lord will even give you a little room to make it work from there. That's how serious the Lord is about marriage. This comes from the Lord. They didn't even plan nothing. You know, we like to jump in stuff without planning. The Lord said, that's okay. Plan it now. I say, boy, it'll stop a whole lot of fornicating at hotels if they had ministers and justice of the peace outside the hotel room waiting on the people to come out and say, now, nah, y'all done did it. Now we can do this. You now man and wife. Because that's what he's telling you here. If a man entice a maid, you know that go on a lot. He entice a maid and first of all, she had to be enticeable and that is not betrothed. Betrothed really mean married. So if she was, if she was betrothed, if she was married, even if she hadn't laid with nobody, you know, she could have had an agreement that she was, had made with a man and they was going to come together on a set occasion, then she was already taken. That would have been adultery if she was betrothed. See, that's what it said about Joseph and Mary. See, Joseph was married to Mary. They hadn't slept together yet. You know, they, they tried to do things in order. They was doing it in order. They had made the agreement kind of like we look at engagement, but see, engagement was married to them. Wasn't no, you get engaged and we're going to get married next year and then change your mind. See, that was, they had made the agreement. Marriage is the covenant. It's the agreement. They had made the agreement. That's why Joseph, when he found out she was pregnant, he said, okay, you done slept with somebody. I'm going to put you away. He couldn't put her away unless they was married. He said, I'm going to put her away. He wasn't going to make no scene. Being a just man, he was going to do it privately. He wasn't going to put her on front street and make everybody see what was going on. But he said, I'm going to divorce you because they was married, even though they hadn't slept together. So that's this case. If a man entice a maid that is not, not betrothed, she not married, because if she married, that's another situation. That's adultery. And lie with her. Now, he enticed this woman to sleep with her. Now, he got to go the extra mile. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. See, land together don't, don't make you marry, but land together make you have to get married. That, that is making the agreement, and now you're going to do it from then on, according to what we read. Go ahead. Now, the father had to say if she was in her father's house, what? If a father utterly refused to give her unto him, uh -huh. he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgin. See, he still couldn't get off scot-free, could he? He couldn't just go on about his business. 
Men do that all the time. Not only they done lay with the woman, she done had kids bound. And then they go on about their bed, sleep with somebody else. Got kids over here, sleep with somebody else. Kids everywhere, no responsibility. Look, the Lord didn't play like that. Because he go somewhere else, and then the woman going to be with somebody else, and that's mess in God's eyesight. Go to uh, Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20. See, that's why back in the day, and I'm glad I learned this early on. I got in the word early on. Back in the day, brothers would say, well, you, you slept with so-and-so, but that's your wife. I know what they meant. Because once you did that, then, hey, you had, to, you had to take it from there. Wasn't no going back even on that. That necessitates making the covenant a marriage. Leviticus 20 and 10. Leviticus 20 and 10. So the Lord have mercy on you. He can get you out of situations you might have been in. You know, because if you go about your business, now you got a, a head banging come from the Lord. But even though you got frisky and didn't do things in order and then slept with somebody, you got to do the right thing from then on. It's just like some people, they slept together and the woman and got pregnant and then they hurry up and get married. Hey, they did the right thing. I don't care if they ain't even like each other. God didn't say nothing about hope you like her. Look, that's your wife. Take her home with you. Leviticus 20 and 10. Go ahead. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, Uh even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. See, again, this this, is really the only way the man could commit adultery unless he left his wife because the Lord hate that. Marriage works. Divorce doesn't. The Bible way. This is the only way. You got people saying, you know, well, a man commit adultery. If he laid with somebody else that wasn't married. Look, we we'll get to some of that. But the Lord show you, he, he ain't had no problem with men having multiple wives. We not pushing that nowadays because it didn't have to happen. But you can't read nothing in the Bible where the Lord says it's wrong with something wrong with that. So but this is adultery. This is the way a man commit adultery. He slept with another man's wife. Aside from the loophole, if he got rid of his wife, because the Lord hate that, he created some more adultery there. But other than that, this is the only way a man commit adultery, brother and sister. The man that committed adultery, how? With another man's wife. Just like sister called me and said, well, my husband slept with somebody. Look, let the Lord deal with it. If he fornicating, sleep with women coming and going, the Lord going to deal with him. You ain't got to worry about that. Let the Lord deal with him. But he said, the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer, and who? And the adulteress. What's going to happen? Shall surely be put to death. See, the Lord didn't like none of this. Some people get on, we're going to read down where it talk about sodomites, which is not marriage according to the Bible way. It, that don't work. That ain't marriage. But some people say, well, y'all harping on that. Look, we harp on all of it. Plain old run-of-the-mill adultery is the death penalty in God's sight. Now, ain't nobody going to get stoned now, but that don't mean it's okay with God. He's going to stone you at judgment day. And if you don't get it together, the stoning is going to be the lake of fire. Go ahead. And the man that lieth with his father's wife. See, the Lord covered every aspect. The man that lied with his father's wife. Go ahead. Hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Go ahead. Both of them shall surely be put to death. They, they deserve a death penalty. Go ahead. Their blood shall be upon them. Uh-huh. This is why I understand Absalom slept with his father's wives. Ten of them. And the Lord gave him the death penalty. Go ahead. Even though David didn't want them to die. Go ahead. And if a man lie with his daughter-in-law. See, both sides. You, a man sleep with his father's wife or a man sleep with his son's wife, his daughter-in-law, what they did. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Uh-huh. They have wrought confusion. Mm-hmm. Their blood shall be upon them. 
Go ahead. If a man also lie with mankind. Okay, now all of this is in the same few verses. So now, if, a, if, if now two men can lie together, this foolishness we got going on wholesale in this world, then yeah, all this okay then. It's okay for a man just to sleep with another man's wife and it's okay. That's my right. I'm going to start marching with a sign so I got the right to be an adulterer. No, nah, that's foolishness. So if adultery is still wrong, then we know this is wrong. What is this? Verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with women, uh -huh. both of them have committed an abomination. Mm -hmm. They shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. Their blood shall be upon them. See, all of it's wrong. Two men sleeping together is an abomination. And we can't see that. That shows you the world is upside down. We back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And you're not even supposed to talk like that because, look, I ain't saying, look, I ain't, I know the Lord going to handle it. So I don't want nothing to happen to nobody now because I want it the way the Lord got it, and that is he going to deal with everybody on Judgment Day but I'm compelled to show you what the Lord say in the Bible. This is in the Bible. It's like I did a funeral. I did a funeral. I didn't know at the time that the guy died was a sodomite. Got to the funeral. Me and brother near my brother near my reading for we look around. Ain't nothing but sodomites up in there in Chicago on seventy something Stony. Nothing but sodomites. He's like, oh. but the thing is, I wasn't. I'm, I'm here to deal with the dead deal with the funeral, I ain't going to say, I ain't going to deal with their lifestyle even though they up in there talking crazy, getting up talking, smacking their lips like women. It was hilarious. But I wasn't going to say nothing about them, but I just opened the Bible they was mad. I'm here to talk about the dead. I opened the Bible they was upset. You know why? Because they know what the Bible say. They know what the Bible say. I wasn't going to read. I still didn't read none of this. I did throw a little bone they way since they was back there chitter-chattering, hugged up. I ain't said nothing about them. Two men back there hugged. Well, I'm going to get in trouble for this preacher? <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> I didn't hear him till you know, brother, I think Dietrich told me later that's what they said because I, I just heard a lot of chitter-chatter in the back just talking crazy. That's what I'm saying. When you lose your mind, you can really lose it. Just out on Front Street, way out the closet. That ain't marriage in God's Bible, brothers and sisters. I don't care what they say. 13, read it again. If a man also lie with mankind mm -hmm. as he lies with a woman. See, if they're so sick, they can't stop this. Well, I'm so sick, I'm gonna keep, I would have kept doing what I was doing before I got in the Word. Sleep with all the women I can get my hands on. Sleep with any man's wife. That got to be okay, too. It said the same thing. People say, well, they sick. Well, I'm sick, too. But I had to get well because the Lord, he got some punishment for this sickness. Look, anything you learn, anything you do, brothers and sisters, it's learned. It ain't nothing, you know, built in from birth. It's a learned behavior. You can take a baby, as soon as they born, over here in the hospital around the corner, take that baby to J Japan, give them some Japanese parents, and that baby will only know them and will speak Japanese. Won't even know his English-born parents. He will learn what he is introduced to. So it's all learned. If a man lie with mankind as he lie with womankind, they have committed what? An abomination. Go ahead. They shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Their blood shall be upon them. See, just like the man that committed adultery with a man's wife. It's all wrong in God's holy Bible. Go ahead. And if a man take a wife and her mother, uh -huh. it is wickedness. Oh, if a man take a wife and her mother, he got two wives. See, two wives ain't never been no issue with God, but he still had rules and regulations to go with it. Just like the Mormons. They openly... Talk about having more than one wife, but they doing this. I seen them on TV. A man said, yeah, I'm married to her, and I'm married to her mama too. Look, you didn't read this, did you? Even two sisters, the Lord outlawed, outlawed that. 
I saw some of the Mormons doing that. And see, even though the Lord let men have more than one wife, he did not make it where thou shalt have more than one wife. So you ain't never had to do that. And that's what they kind of make it. See, that's what, even though we don't push it, I know what God allowed. But that's what they, the Mormons and some of these Hebrew brothers, they act like it got to be done. One sister called me and said she talked to some brothers from New York. That's what they preach it. I mean, that's the first thing come out their mind. Well, you, you single sister, you know you could be my other wife. Look, you're supposed to be preaching the gospel. That's the first thing you're talking about. She said, I couldn't believe that. That's the first thing he said. Well, you single? She contacted them about the word. See, when you understand the word, you're going to preach the word, but you still know what the Lord allowed. So look, read that again, verse uh, 14. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wicked. A wife and her mother, that's wickedness. Go ahead. They shall be burnt with fire. Uh-huh. Both he and they. Uh-huh. That there be no wickedness among you. See, now this ain't marriage, is it? Somebody doing this, this is wickedness. No people that done done it. I'm talking about here now today. No people that done done it. But it shouldn't be done according to what we read. That ain't marriage. That don't work. Marriage works the Bible way. This ain't marriage the Bible way according to this. Go ahead. And if a man lie with the beast, mm -hmm. he shall surely be put to death. See, now they had all these laws on the books. Even in this, in the military, they had bestiality where a man can't lie with a beast in the military. But it came in conjunction with the law that said two men, you know, they couldn't be together. Sodomites. It came with the same law. So when they threw out, made it okay for, you know, men to be Sodomites in the military, they had to throw this out. Let's show you how crazy it is. I don't know if they put it back in another way, but I know they threw it out because it came with the other one. But this is all in the Bible. If a man lie with the beast, that means he know man is crazy and would do it. They had a man talking about he wanted to marry a goat over in Africa. I just want to marry that goat. No, that ain't marriage. It's crazy. And this didn't happen. See, you, we, we around the city. We don't hear about that much, but I done been around the country too and heard people talking about it. Oh, that sheep is good. I say, man, you crazy in the head. Even when I was in the world, I wasn't that crazy. <laughs> if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death and what else? And you shall slay the beast. You done got the poor beast killed because you didn't confuse him. Go ahead. And if a woman approach unto any beast. Now, if a woman approach to a beast, go ahead. And lie down there too. Uh-huh. Thou shalt kill the woman uh -huh. and the beast. Boy, the Lord ain't playing. He kill up everybody, won't he? Kill the woman and kill the beast too. You done messed the beast up. Got him confused. Go ahead. They shall surely be put to death. Uh-huh. Their blood shall be upon them. Go ahead. And if a man. That's good. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21. Now, he gave you an example. He said a man can't have a wife and a mother. See, that opened the door. That lets you know that other than that, having more than one wife, the Lord didn't have no problem with it. And that show you, that's how I know a man can only commit adultery by sleeping with another man's wife. Because else, the Lord co-signed adultery. He allowed people, you know, people talking about more than one wife. Like I said, just because we ain't pushing it now because of the situation, don't get foolish and don't understand what God say. We ain't pushing it because it don't have to be. But that don't mean it's wrong in God's eyesight. So I know what God said in the Bible. And all you got to do is read it. You read it all over the Bible. Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21 and verse 15. Read that. If a man have two wives. Oh, if a man have how many wives? Have two wives. You mean this in the Holy Bible? A man could possibly have two wives? People want to accept what they, I know women don't like it either. Like one brother told me, he said, man, every time we read something like that, man, I can feel my wife cringing. She be cringing. 
Yeah, women don't like it. But again, you got a problem. You got to take it up with God. Just be glad we ain't pushing it right now because God allowed it. He got good reason to allow it. And it's going to be full-fledged all over again this way because this is better than the mess that's going on now. See, whenever you got a bunch of loose women around, they're going to hook up with some man. And then they ain't going to stay with that man. They hook up with another man. And the men and the women just committing forn fornication, coming and going. The Lord is, would rather for, hey, if it's more than one with a man, y'all just stay with him. That's how he's going to fix it in the end so it don't be all this run back and forth, fornication and adultery. So he said, if a man have two wives, go ahead. One beloved and another hated. So he's going to give you instructions on how to handle that. How you going to get instructions on the Holy Bible on how to handle something, and then you going to think, oh, that's that's a, that's a adultery or fornication. Look, this can't be adultery and fornication. He's giving you instructions in the Holy Bible. He, he, he co-signed, he's telling you, he co-signed adultery and fornication. Look, you just don't know what's in the Bible, evidently. He said, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hate, because the Lord know mankind. He know, he don't mean one is hated where he's, I hate you, I can't stand you. No, he more partial to one than another. Just like we're going to read about Jacob. Jacob was, he was partial to a Rachel. He even had two sisters that the Lord later forbid, but in that situation, they had to deal with it. See, sometimes once the, once the uh, horse is out the barn, ain't nothing you can do anyway. You can holler about the horse out the barn all you want to. Look, it's already out the barn. If a man had two wives, one beloved and another hated, go ahead. And they have borne him children, uh -huh. both the beloved and the hated. Uh -huh. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, uh -huh. then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, uh -huh. which is indeed the firstborn. See, the Lord giving you rules on how to handle the situation. You know, he more partial toward one, so he going to cater to her children above the children of the one who he's not so fond of, even though they the firstborn. The Lord said, uh-uh, you can't do that. He gave me rules and regulations on how to deal with it. 17. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the first And again, it don't mean he really walking around talking about, I hate her. Ooh, I can't stand that wife. I'm in love with the other. I hate her. No, he's just saying, the Lord, know that man will lean one way or another in most cases. He said, but if he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for... For the firstborn, because he is the firstborn. You couldn't change the order of things. But we talking about God giving us instruction. God giving us instructions on how to deal with marriage. See, even this works. This is marriage according to the Bible, brothers and sisters, and it works. How in the world are you going to tell me? Like I saw something recently. It said, uh, 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 it said, uh, so you telling me two men could get married, but I can't have more than one wife. Somebody said, well, what they got to do? It got a lot to do because it just showed the hypocrisy of man. You're going to take something that God called evil in the Bible and say it's okay. Then you're going to take something that God says okay in the Bible and you're going to act like something wrong with it. That's a backward society. But go ahead. Read 17 again. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn uh -huh. by giving him a double portion of all that he has. Uh -huh. For he is the beginning of his strength. Uh -huh. The right of his firstborn is his. See, he couldn't change it, could he? Go to Genesis uh, 29. Let's look at that situation. Why he said the beloved and the hated. Again, he didn't really mean hated, hated. But he mean he partial toward one than the other, which is natural. See, Lord, that's the good thing about God. He got everything covered. He covered every base. Genesis 29 and pick it up at 15. And again, if something wrong with marriage on 
this fashion, then, hey, the whole Bible is a lie. The whole foundation of the Bible is wrong because even the holy nation who God chose is built on marriage after this fashion. Genesis 29 and 15. Go ahead. And Laban said unto Jacob, mm -hmm. because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for not? Uh-huh. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Uh-huh. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Raquel. Uh-huh. Leah was tender-eyed, but Raquel uh -huh. was beautiful and well-favored. See, tender-eyed. I seen the preacher say, yeah, she had, she was cock-eyed. She was tender-eyed. No, that's not what it means. Tender-eyed mean, it means she wasn't as pretty as the other one. You, we would say ugly. <laughs> she wasn't as beautiful to look upon as the other one. That's what it meant. That's why it told you Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. That mean, and that's and that's what's going to draw a man's attention first in most cases. Unless you're living in this world and he's looking at a man over there. But other than that, that's what's going to draw a man's attention there, and, and that's the norm. But the Lord, he said beauty is vain. See, the Lord looking at the whole situation. So Leah was tender, Rachel was beautiful, well-favored, and now he's going to tell the man, he want his payment to be and notice what he was willing to do hey. and Jacob loved Rachel uh huh he loved he didn't even really know her but he loved her why from and that outward appearance but go ahead and said I will serve these seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter mm -hmm. and Laban said it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man uh huh abide with me see Laban went forward he said well I, I might as well give it to you then give it to somebody else. So abide with me. And this show you they had some patience. He going to work seven years. You know, a man and a woman nowadays, they don't wait seven minutes. They be in the bed together. He going to wait seven years. He going to work, not going to lay with it, not do nothing in the meantime. He going to be patient. That's what we need a lot more of nowadays. But that's okay. Like the Lord told you in Exodus 22, if you jump the gun, just do what you got to do right then. Go ahead. And Jacob served. You have some patience the next time, I bet you. Mm -hmm. Just like people get in the situation, get married, then be crying all the way. Yeah, you, you will wait next time a little longer, hopefully. Go ahead. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. Uh-huh. And they seemed unto him but a few days. See, it seemed like a few days. That's a long time, seven years. That's a week of years, seven years. But he really wanted his, he want, he really wanted this wife, and he worked seven years. Go ahead. For the love he had to her. Uh huh. And Jacob said unto Laban, "Give me my wife, uh -huh. for my days are fulfilled, uh -huh. that I may go in unto he her." He says, "Time for me to go in." That means he hadn't slept with her yet. Mm -hmm. See, nowadays we sleep first, then ask questions. Mm -hmm. We figured out. Hey, that's doing it out of order, but you still got to make it work. After you do that, we got examples of it. But it's better this way. It's better to plan it, at least get to know the person. You know how crazy they are. But he did it, but then he got another trick coming. Go ahead. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter and brought her to him and he went in unto her. See, he, he did the wrong one. He didn't take Rachel the one. He worked for seven years. He worked for Rachel. She looked better than him. He worked for her, but he got him, he got him. They had a feast, had a party. Obviously, he'd been drinking. You know, you'd have been drinking and all of a sudden you wake up with somebody. That's your wife too. You might as well go to Vegas and get married according to the Lord. See, and Jacob understood that. That's why Jacob didn't bip or bop. He was mad, but notice this. Go ahead. And Laban, and it came on. Uh, Verse 24. Read it again. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah. He gave unto, gave unto his daughter Leah. Zilpah, uh -huh. his maid. No, I'm sorry. Read 22 again. My, my fault. 23. 23. 
And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, uh -huh. and he went in unto her. That means he slept with her. Mm -hmm. See, evidently, it was dark. It was dark. He had been drinking. He didn't even know. That's bad business. You know, some people done done this. They wake up in the morning, find out what they done done. What have I done? This right here, got married. Or made it necessary to get to make a covenant. Go ahead. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, his maid for an handmaid. Uh huh. He gave her a maid. Go ahead, which is important to note. Go ahead. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. See, this when Jacob woke up. He didn't find out till the morning. I guess it didn't make no difference in the dark. But he found out in the morning it was Leah. The light come up. Go ahead. And he said to Laban, uh -huh. what is this that thou hast done unto me? See, he upset. Go ahead. Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Go ahead. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? He said, you done fooled me, man. Go ahead. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country mm -hmm. to give the younger before the firstborn. Yeah, that would have been nice to tell somebody, though. <laughs> See, this is a trick. He said, well, we don't, we don't do it that way around here. Yeah, well, <laughs> you didn't tell me that in the first place. We had a deal. But he had to live with it because once he laid with it, it was a wrap. Go ahead. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. See, he didn't even intend for this. He didn't intend for it. And it wasn't even his fault, but he still had to deal with it. And ultimately, the Lord let it happen this way. Because the Lord got him a plan in all of this too. One way or another, the Lord always got a plan, brothers and sisters. But go ahead. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. Uh, so, he, so he was only with Leah for seven years. He was only with Leah for seven years. He still couldn't get Rachel. He had to do another seven years. See, that kept La Laban was slick. He kept Jacob on the string. He kept him on the street. He said, this, this dude worked good. I'm going to keep him around. He might take Rachel and leave. I'm going to give him Leah. He's going to keep working for Rachel. Go ahead. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Now, that was seven more years later. So that's a total of 14 years he ended up working on this thing. Go ahead. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. See, they, he even gave... Her a maid too. That's important to note. Go ahead. And he went in also unto Rachel. See, finally, he got what he wanted. Go ahead. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah. See, that's what the scripture we just read in Deuteronomy uh, 21 was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what it was talking about. You got one beloved and one hated. Well, really, it just means he loved her more. He loved Rachel more than Leah. Go ahead. And served with him yet seven other years. Uh-huh. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated. See, it says he was hated. It wasn't like he hated, hated her. But he was partial toward Rachel. Go ahead. He opened her womb. See, but the Lord looked out. He looked out for the one who need looking out for. The Lord is in control of all of this. See, it's just like the Lord made it happen where this woman end up getting married. She probably wasn't going to never get married. Probably everybody was going to keep overlooking her. But the Lord had compassion on, on everybody. So he's looking out. Just like I seen a sister say one time, she was talking about this more than one wife thing. And she was saying, well, you know, why, does, why the sisters that got a husband so selfish? See, she understood. She said, look, the, the, what about the ones that don't have one? But see, the ones that got one, they only thinking about, hey, I don't, want, I don't want him to be with nobody else. But again, we're not pushing that now because, hey, I know brothers ain't even ready for that. Half the brothers can't even take care of one wife, let alone two. Matter of fact, some brothers get married so they can get their wife food stamps. <laughs> so how the heck you going to be trying to take on another? And I know Hebrews that do that, then they get married, they be running from house to house. They be running from house to house, and then they get mad, and they end up divorcing one, and now they with another one over here. And then they get mad, and they divorce her, and they with another one. 
So that's out of order. The Lord never intended for it to be that way. But, but Rachel was barren. Uh-huh, but Rachel was barren. The Lord made it that way. 32, go ahead. And Leah conceived and buried his son. And she called his name Reuben. Mm -hmm. For she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. See? Now, she had a son, and she kept having sons. The Lord blessed her with sons. She had four right in the way. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> had four sons just like that. And Rachel looking at her. Go to 30 and uh, 1. Rachel, the Lord made. See, the Lord, he even the, he even the score out. He know how to balance the, balance the deck. The deck be stacked in somebody's favor, but the Lord are even it out. Jacob was more partial to her, Rachel. He said, well, Leah need a little more comfort. So she having the children, Rachel can't have none. Upset, 30 and 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. See, and that's not, now these two sisters, which technically shouldn't have been. But even in this situation, hey, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. But the Lord outlawed this when, when Moses gave the law. He outlawed it. Just like we read about, we read the part about the, the, having a mother and a daughter. But the same two chapters over, it tells you about two sisters. But they had to deal with it, and they made it through it. No, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't nice. I know why women don't like it, but hey, you got to look at what the Lord like. So he said, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, what? Until give me children or else I die. See, she going to blame him. Like he got control over that. Give me some children or else I die. <laughs> like, woman, please. Verse 2. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. Uh-huh. And he said, am I in God's stead? He said, do I look like God to you? Go ahead. Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb. See, God did that. And he did it on purpose. It wasn't no accident. Ain't no accidents with the Lord. Go ahead. And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, mm -hmm. go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. See, now he, now she had a maid, and she gave him a maid. She said, well, I'm going to have some children one way or another. See, they knew what was important, so she gave him her maid. Bill her. Go ahead. And she gave him Bill her, her handmaid, to wife. Uh huh. And Jacob went in unto her. See, and Jacob went in unto her. Go ahead. And Bill her conceived and bare Jacob a son. See, now look, if something is wrong with a brother being with multiple women or multiple wives, hey, Jacob is a fornicating, and he fornicating and committing adultery all over the place, right? But no, he's not. And, and I know, understand one thing. The Lord don't change, brother. So, again, I say, I've been saying this for years. We're not pushing more than one wife. It's not because I think it's something wrong in God's eyesight. Don't mistake that for one moment. I know what God allowed. I can read it in the Bible. Go ahead. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. Mm -hmm. And Rachel said, God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice uh -huh. and hath given me a son. Therefore, call she his name Dan. See, now she had a son, and she ended up having another son. See, the Lord is building a nation here. That's one reason why he allowed this. That ain't the only reason. Because really the best reason, aside from populating, the Lord got it cuts down on fornication. Now Bill, her, and Zilpah, and Leah, they ain't going to be going around sleeping from house to house from man to man. And men whoremong and sleeping with them. They ain't going to do that. Because they all belong to him. Uh, let's move a little far. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And when Leah saw that she had left barren. Now she had had four sons already. Rachel still didn't have none, but she gave my maid Zilpah. And she had a couple. Right quick. We just skipping to save a little time. So now Leah saw she wasn't having no more for the time being. Go ahead. She took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob. See, she had wife. a maid, Zilpah. Rachel maid was Bill, her. She, so she gave her maid. So now this the fourth woman Jacob is with. So he, he a big McCain of adultery, if you, if you believe that. Now, don't be foolish. 
Go ahead. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a son. Uh-huh. And Leah said, a troop coming. And she called his name Gad. Uh-huh. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a okay, second so son. Okay, so she had a second son. She had two. Both maids had two sons apiece. That's four. Leah then already had four. That's eight. But the Lord ain't done yet. Because the Lord is building a nation. And it's easy to build a nation or populate with four women as opposed to one. Matter of fact, if a woman's smart, she'd say, yeah, you better get some help on this. You want me to have 12 sons? Are you serious? Some women have done it, but it ain't pretty. And it take a lot longer. See, if a woman's smart, she'd say, yeah, you better get some help. Get you somebody else in here. But that's what the Lord did. Eight already. Skip over to uh, verse 14 and go ahead. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field. Now, Reuben was the oldest. He didn't got grown by now, and they still having kids. Go ahead. And brought them unto his mother Leah. See, Leah is his mother. She, he was the firstborn. She had the first four. Go ahead. Then Rachel said to Leah, mm -hmm. give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. Uh -huh. And she said unto her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Uh -huh. And wouldest thou take also my son's mandrakes see, also? They, see, they going back and forth. Because you know they had it rough. They two sisters. But they had to live with it. So they going, she's like, you, now you want my son mandrakes. You already took my husband. <laughs> Got on my nerve. <laughs> so now Rachel wanted them mandrakes bad evidently. So she said what? And Rachel said, Therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's man. She said, give me some mandrakes. He sleep with you tonight then. Well, they was crazy, boy. And then, like I said, some, some sisters said, yeah, poor Jacob. I do mean poor Jacob. He just been going back and forth. See, brothers think this is a, something to glory in. Look, we trying to get into God's kingdom. We ain't here to have more than one wife. We ain't here for that. That's why we don't even preach that. That ain't what the first thing come off our tongue when we see a sister is to try to marry another sister because that ain't what it's about. We're trying to get into God's kingdom. But did God allow it? Of course he did. So now Jacob got to go with Leah tonight, 16. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening. Now, now he, he don't know they done made a deal for him. Go ahead. And Leah went out to meet him uh -huh. and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. Uh -huh. And he lay with her that night. Poor Jacob. <laughs> he can't even get no rest, boy. Go ahead. And, and God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. See, she even had a fifth son. See, the Lord is in all of this. See, if this is fornication or adultery, Jacob big time fornicated and adultery. Why the Lord working in this? That's show you the Lord ain't got no problem with this. Go ahead. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire. Mm -hmm. because That's I good. Because she's going to have another son. She ended up having six. Half of the 12 sons came out of her, and she was the one he didn't prefer to be with. That's show you how the Lord, he had balanced things out, brother and sister. She was the one. The Lord blessed her tremendously. But now, go to uh, verse 22. Go to verse 22. Because the God, he didn't forget about the other one either. She, you know, she ain't had a child yet. Ten kids done been born by this man, and she ain't had one. God made her have some patience. Go ahead. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her room. God did it. So God is in all of this. So if a man had more than one wife was a, the worst sin. See, that's where women want to make it. I know why. I know they don't like it. But hey, talk to God about that. Because if that's the worst sin, God working in this sin, ain't he? And God remembered Rachel and God did what? He hearkened to her, open her womb, 23. And she conceived and bare a son mm -hmm. and said, God had taken away my reproach. Uh-huh. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. And he did. He added Benjamin. Then he threw in a daughter for good measure with uh, Leah. She had a daughter, Dinah. But now let's go further. Go to Samuel, 1 Samuel 1. 
We should be done by now. We just half done. Y'all in trouble. I can't believe this. First Samuel, the first chapter. That's why I said, and it could be a whole nother lesson on this. This is totally different from where I did it a uh, couple of years ago. Because it's so much on marriage. But anytime it's in the Bible, the way the Lord got it, hey, marriage work. That's why they, be, they got the little thing on the internet. They talking about marriage work. They give them all kind of little things because people have a hard time making marriage work. But once you understand the ground rules, hey, it can work. It ain't no problem. 1 Samuel 1. See, all you got to do is read the Bible. People talk about a lot of stuff behind closed doors, but if you read the Bible, you know what the Lord say. That's all that matters to me. I ain't worried about man. I can care less. The Bible teach me and anybody not to fear no man. God is the one got the kingdom and the lake of fire to put you in. I can care less what man think. 1 Samuel 1 and 1. Go ahead. Now, there was a man of Ramath A.M. Zophim uh -huh. of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah. Uh-huh. The son now, of... Now, this, this, is, this is a Levite. Elkanah. The son of Jeroham. Uh-huh. The son of Elahu. The son of Tohu. Mm -hmm. The son of Zuf and Ephrathite. Ephrathite, because that's where they lived at. But I know he was a Levite because his son is a Levite. He did sacrifice, and he got on Saul when he tried to do a sacrifice. But go ahead, verse 2. And he had two wives. Oh, he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, uh -huh. and the name of the other, Peninnah. See, in the Bible, the Bible show you what God deal with. See, God don't deal with two men getting married like the world tell you. But, hey, as far as a man having two wives, that's all over the Bible. God ain't never said he had a problem with that. He ain't never called that sin. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peniah. Go ahead. And Penina had children, mm -hmm. but Hannah had no children. See, kind of like the same scenario with Rachel and Leah. Same scenario. <laughs> Hannah didn't have no children. Go ahead. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Uh -huh. And two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. See, and they was bogus too, but go ahead. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah, Pen, Peninnah his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portion. Uh-huh. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. Uh-huh. He, he gave, loved, go ahead, I'm sorry. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. See, see, he, 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 he was more partial toward Hannah but Hannah didn't have no children. So he tried to overcompensate for her. He tried to overcompensate. But the Lord had shut her womb. But he had children by the other woman. And just show you sometimes women would be ugly in the situation. But hey, that come with the territory. Go ahead. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. See? Her adversary, that made Peniah, the wife that had children, she provoked Hannah. You know, like, like some women would do. She going to take advantage of the situation and she going to provoke her because she ain't got no kids. Basically like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you ain't had no kids. See, we didn't see that, that Leah did that to Rachel, but it still bothered Rachel. It's enough in and of itself. But she provoked the woman. Go ahead. But that shows you, hey, so this ain't the best of situations, but they had to deal with it, didn't they? Hannah couldn't get mad and say, well, I'm out of here. This woman tripping. Go ahead, verse 7. And as he did so year by year, mm -hmm. when he went up to the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. so she provoked her. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. See, he went so bad. It got so bad. Because this woman out of line, that the, the woman cried and wouldn't eat but see the lord see all that and he allowed it and in due time if you believe and serve the lord the lord gonna come to your rescue go ahead verse eight then said elkanah her husband to her uh-huh hannah 
Why weepest thou? Mm -hmm. And why eatest thou not? Mm -hmm. And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? See, he tried to take care of the business. He was like, look, why are you all upset? I'm better. I treat you better than ten sons. Because he knew what the problem was. She ain't had no kids. The other one had. But skip down to verse 11 because she prayed for a son. Go ahead, verse 11. And she bowed a vow. Hannah did. Go ahead. And said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine hand, See, the Lord put you in a situation sometime so he can bless you with something unimaginable. So he put her in a situation, made her really cry to the Lord, and the Lord is there. 